let us look at another example of sequencing n jobs on two machines. Gary's auto shop is bidding on a contract to do all the custom work for Mike's used car dealership. One of the main requirements in obtaining this contract is rapid delivery time. Since Mike wants the cars face lifted and back on his lot in a hurry. So basically Mike owns a used car dealership and he has come up with a contract for somebody to take up all the custom work for his dealership. And Gary who owns an auto shop is bidding for this contract. Now Mike has said that the auto shop which is the best in delivery time is going to get the contract. Now Mike has said that if Gary can refit and repaint five cars that Mike has just received in 24 hours or less, the contract will be his. So basically since delivery time is the criteria, Mike says that in the last few hours he has received five cars which require refitting and repainting. Now if Gary can complete the job on these five cars in less than 24 hours then the contract will be his. Following is the time in hours required in the refitting shop and the paint shop for each of the five cars. So now we have been given how much time each car is going to take in the refitting shop and how much time is it going to take in the repainting shop. Now assuming that the cars go through the refitting operations before they are repainted, can Gary meet the time requirements and get the contract? So first each of these cars has to go to the refitting shop and then it has to go to the repainting shop. So with these cars and the time for each of the shops, will Gary be able to deliver all these cars in less than 24 hours? So let us see how Gary can schedule or sequence these jobs to get the contract. So this is the information that has been provided to us. We have cards A, B, C, D and E. We have refitting time in hours and repainting time in hours. Now we have to find out how to sequence these cars such that the overall processing time is less than or equal to 24 hours. So let us use Johnson's rule to find out the best sequence. Now Johnson's rule says that first you have to list the operations and the time for the operations on both the machines. Then we have to select the job with the shortest operation time. So the shortest operation time I would say is this that is zero hours. If the shortest time is for the first machine then do the job first. But if the shortest time is for the second machine do the job last. So here the shortest time is for the first machine which is refitting. So we will put B at the beginning of the sequence. So let us strike through this line here indicating that we have already sequenced it. Now let's repeat the same steps that is find out the next job with the shortest operation time. 
So E has the shortest operation time for repainting. And since this is on the second machine, we'll sequence it from the end. So we'll have E at the end. Let's strike through this line as well. Next, shortest operation time is two for car C. Again, this is on the second machine. So we'll sequence it towards the end. So C will be here. Let's strike through this line as well. The next shortest processing time is three, which is for car A. Again, this is on the second machine. So towards the end, let's strike through this car also. And in the end, we are left with D. So D will be between B and A. So the sequence is B, B, A, C, E. Now let us find out the total operation time. So let us list the cars. So B, D, A, C, E. Then we'll find out the in and out time of the first machine, which is the refitting. In and out. And again for repainting. So now B will be first processed in the refitting shop and B takes zero hours for refitting. So B will be in at the zeroth instance and out at the zeroth instance. And then it can be processed in the repainting shop at the zeroth instance. And then from there, it is going to take four hours for repainting. So it will be out at the fourth hour. Now D can go into refitting shop at the zeroth hour because B is not at all being processed in the refitting shop. So D can start at the zeroth instance and B is going to take eight hours. So D will be out at the eighth hour. Now since B is already done with the repainting shop at the fourth hour, and D will be done with refitting at the eighth hour, we can start processing D in the repainting shop at the eighth hour. And it is going to take six more hours there. So it is going to be out at the 14th hour. Now for A, refitting takes six hours. So while D is out of refitting at the eighth hour, A can be processed for refitting and it is going to take six hours. So it will be out on the 14th hour. And then 14th hour, A can go into repainting and it's going to take three hours there. So it will be out on the 17th hour. Now C can go into refitting at the 14th hour and it takes five hours there. So it will be in on the 14th hour and then five hours. So out on the 19th hour. And then even though A is finished on the repainting shop at the 17th hour and repainting shop is available, C is still being processed in the refitting shop till the 19th hour. So C can go into repainting only after that so the 19th hour, it will go into repainting and C takes two hours there. So it will be out on the 21st hour. Next is E to be processed in the refitting shop. So C is done with refitting at the 19th hour. So at that point, 
E can go into refitting and E will take two hours so it will be out on the 21st hour and then at the 21st hour it can go into repainting shop and there it takes one hour so it will be out on the 22nd hour so basically in 22 hours all the cars will be processed in the refitting as well as repainting shops so definitely Gary can process these cars in less than or equal to 24 hours and he can gain the contract if he schedules these jobs based on this sequence.